working outside. I did about an hour of good work and then an hour of absolute wheel spinning. No progress. That's the way it goes. I just had a research paper published and I documented it every step of the way. This is what it took to write and publish this paper, Digital Topological Groups, by Professor Dae Wong Lee and me. Did about two hours today. Pretty discouraging results. We'll keep at it. I'm going to try to describe the general process of math research and publication through the lens of this one specific paper. This is abstract and new mathematics, so I'm not going to get into the details really, just the process. My experience on this paper was mostly typical, I'd say. Maybe it was a bit easier than most. It certainly was faster than most. My first idea for the paper began in October 2021 when I read this other paper by Professor Lee. It gave me some ideas, so I asked if he'd be interested in working together on a follow-up. He was into it. Ended up with some crazy calculus type thing. Did some series, drew some graphs. Not convinced. So I emailed him a big batch of thoughts. I had just gone on a trip to Colorado with my family, so I had some time to think about this stuff. And these three pages I more or less wrote all at once on July 6, 2022. Like most projects I've done, I had a pretty good idea of what the theorems would end up being, even from day one. Our initial concept was about H spaces and quaternions. We thought this would be the main focus of the paper, but actually the final paper doesn't even mention that stuff. This part here ended up in the paper as corollary 3.9. This stuff here is mostly wrong, I think. We're still not sure, actually. This bit here ended up becoming corollary 4.9. This became theorem 6.2. At the end here, I made a conjecture. This ended up being false, but it was still interesting enough to discuss it in the paper. Did another hour and a half today. Uh, some example that I was hoping would work, and it turns out it was um, possible to use a computer to just check like zillions of cases to see, uh, just to give me an idea if it was gonna work or not. And after about an hour of writing the codes and such, uh, it didn't work. For this project, we did the whole thing by email. Professor Lee lives in Korea, so our sleep schedules are totally misaligned, but this actually works out well sometimes. I could work during the day and then email him at the end of my day with any progress I made, and I'd usually get a response from him when I woke up the next morning. I get the impression that this is atypical. I think most people like to work together in person or do Zoom meetings or something like that, but I think it worked fine for us. Especially when one of the collaborators isn't a native English speaker, it's often easier to communicate in writing. Even now, after the paper's fully published, I have never actually met Professor Lee in person, or even on a Zoom. I did about an hour yesterday. Um, at least half of that was making a picture that was totally uninteresting, but for some reason it took me forever to get it just right. Made another much better picture, although I'm not confident at all that what I did was correct. But We'll see. As I write things, I like to make these little orange boxes in the margins. These are notes for changes or additions that I know I'll have to make in the future. I like to try to write a basic skeleton for the paper first and then go back and fill stuff in. Day by day, we would gradually add to the paper. It's a seemingly endless loop of writing and rewriting. Some ideas from the original document make it all the way through to the final paper, but almost no actual sentences did. It's been about two hours drawing more pictures today, making code to draw the pictures for me. I don't know if you care about what's actually in the paper, but here's my attempt at a one minute description. Certain shapes have symmetries to them, and some shapes have such sophisticated symmetries that you can use the shape itself as a context to do algebra. Like everybody knows that the real numbers make a line, so the line is a shape where you can do algebra. Turns out a circle is also a shape where you can do algebra, or a donut shape also is. These are called topological groups. They're important things in topology. And this paper is about digital topological groups. The digital part means we're not talking about ordinary smooth mathematical shapes anymore, but digital type shapes made up of finitely many pixels. Things in geometry and topology are mostly the same when you try to look at them digitally, but some things are strange and different. This is what digital topology is all about. It's a new and fairly niche field at the moment, but I think it's interesting. If you want lots more details, then you can watch a talk I gave about the paper about a year ago. A bit of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I was expecting to, to like finally demonstrate that what I've been trying to do the past week or so is not going to work. But then it started to, to uh, work out, so I... Um, I um, 
anyway, it didn't work out. I, I thought most of that time it was going to work, and it didn't. Probably most individual days feel like failures, and there's usually three bad ideas for every good one. I used to get really discouraged when I spent a lot of time with no progress, but that's all part of the process and I'm kind of used to it by now. I spent a lot of time drawing these pictures and none of them made it into the final paper. It did about two more hours, although almost all of it was just a bogus sort of rabbit hole that ended up with nothing. Did about four hours today. Um, had some ideas that wrote them all up and then decided they were bogus but uh, a lot of just simple editing i think the paper is more or less done now we just gotta cut some stuff out that didn't work out and uh you know clean it up a little three hours seems to be about my daily limit for working on math research after that i get burned out and i can't really focus anymore my mind just starts going in circles i always recorded these little clips at the end of my working time and maybe can tell i sound a bit dazed my co-author has been doing some good stuff he shot down some what I thought were good ideas turned out to be wrong, but uh, it's happening. I think the paper is pretty much done now. We're going to, uh, I don't know if my co-author has anything else to add, but I'm satisfied. So uh, next step is sending it in. We'll see how it goes. All told, we worked just under two months on the technical details. In my experience, this is pretty short. Often it takes far longer, but we were both pretty focused, and I would say this paper's work just generally was a bit easier to me than usual. Heard today my co-author submitted the paper to the journal, the Journal of Mathematical Imaging and Vision. They sometimes publish stuff like this, so we hope they go for it. Now we just gotta wait. After submitting the paper, all you gotta do is wait. The process goes like this. You send it to a journal, and their editor looks at the paper. And the editor usually has a general understanding of what the paper's about, but isn't always a subject area expert. The editor makes an initial judgment to check that nothing is obviously wrong with the paper. And if it looks good, they send it to one or two anonymous referees who read it more closely. Anyway, we waited six months, and then the editor rejected it. That's six months of waiting, all for nothing. It's considered unethical to submit the same paper to more than one journal at once, so that's six months gone just for us to start all over again. This is not really supposed to happen this way. In my experience, the editor themselves don't hold the paper for six months before rejecting it. So we sent it to another journal, Topology and its Applications, which is actually a better journal in my opinion, and the editor went for it. The referee was uncommonly fast, less than a month between the submission and the referee's report. I've had this step last over a year, so in this case it was great. I heard back from the referee, it seems like this paper's um, going to be accepted. We got a bunch of comments, mostly little um, you know, editorial kind of stuff, no serious issue with the content, so I'm satisfied with that. Uh, it took me about two hours of, of work during a long and boring faculty meeting. Um, they had food, so I went, but they can't make me pay attention. Well, we just got one more uh, reviewer's report with more suggestions. Uh, they're all good suggestions. We did them. Hopefully this is the last one. Just got another collection of suggestions for revisions from the referee. So we did it. Hopefully that'll do it. Got the paper back from the referee again for a fourth time. Um, this is a little... Uh, unusual in my experience. The referee wanted us to remove something that they didn't like, but uh, I didn't really see the issue, so we tried to um, explain. We decided to leave it in and wrote a little response explaining why we thought it was all right to leave it in. And that the referee did not like that. It came back with a strongly worded response insisting that we remove the thing. So we're taking it out. Uh, hopefully this will be the last revision. We received the fifth set of recommendations from the referee. Very uh, minor suggestions this time, which actually I appreciate. I mean, it's just little things about the writing, but um, I'm ready to be done. The paper was finally accepted, finally, by the referee. Finally. This isn't an open access journal, so people who want to read the official version of the article have to pay for it. More likely their institution pays a subscription, which is probably very expensive. 
This journal is published by Elsevier, which is generally regarded as a bit problematic in terms of its pricing model. The journal offers an option where the author can pay a lump sum up front and they'll release the paper as open access so anybody can read it for free. I've never heard of anybody doing this, but Professor Lee decided to fork over the cash. I assume he has grant money or his university paid for it. Anyway, that means anybody can read and redistribute the paper however they like. CC by NCND, of course. And that's about it. There is an official publication date for the printed version, but that's more or less a formality at this point. Nobody reads this stuff in print. Nobody reads this stuff anyway. All told, it took about two years from the initial idea to the final published version, but only about two months of that was intensive work. I kept track of my hours spent on real sit-down work, and it was about 50 hours. This seems pretty low, but it's more accurate to say that I spent 50 hours over two months giving like 100% of my attention to the projects. During those months though, and for many months beforehand, I was spending lots of idle time thinking about it. This is impossible to measure, but it's part of the regular background hum in my mind all the time. Anyway, that's what it took to publish the paper. Typical in a lot of ways, but with some twists and turns in there. It's a little weird that I can spend two years mustering all of my professional training and resources to produce a super technical paper. And then I spend about a week casually making this video, which will be seen by far more people than will ever read the paper. Is that weird?